Welcome back to the analysis of Module 6. I hope you enjoyed what was not the most exciting content, but is very, very important stuff indeed. What I'm going to do here is, as I always do, is dive deeper into what I talked about to give you some additional clarity and answer any questions you might have um, as you went through the content, as I always do in the analysis. I started off by saying where you should be now before we move into this section, because it is very, very important. There's no real point bogging yourself down and getting overwhelmed with all this business talk and what you're going to be doing in terms of structures until you have something there that requires the structure. That's really where I started from at the beginning of the module. I said we should have returned to the search phase at least twice at this point because the likelihood is that you're not going to be in a situation where you've just found these perfect products. As you know by now, not every product you look at and put through the Google Sheet is going to be a winner. Eventually, you're going to find a number of products. You may need to spend some time before you find enough products that make it through all the stages of our research phases on the spreadsheet. I want you to be in a position to action on this particular material that I'm talking about right now. In order to take action, you've got to be at a certain point and be ready to order product. You've got to have products that you're ready to pull the trigger on. You should have your profit fundamentals back from your suppliers. You would have calculated your profit using the methods that I explained in the earlier modules. You're going to be at a point now, if you've taken action on the building blocks, where you're ready to go ahead and set up a company. The problem that I find is that if you just simply go through every single module in the course, right the way through to the end before you actually do anything, you're going to be confused by the time you get to the end because things will have progressed and you will have developed ideas as you go through the material. By the time you get to that end of the, the training videos, when you go back to search phase, you're going to be thinking about optimizing your listing, which is not the way to think about it. Every single step in the intelligent sales machine program is a self-contained system in itself. Really, what I'm saying here is if you're not in a position where you've got products ready to go, in that you've got the profitability, you've confirmed the POI, the POR, you know your supplier, you've tested your samples, and all, the, all of those sort of things, there's no point setting up a business entity unless you've done all of that. I mean, you've no business creating a business because you don't have any products to actually put into that business. You don't need a vehicle because you don't have anything to put in there. So it's important that if you find yourself in this position, do not go any further. You're going to get the most out of this training if you go back. You're not going to get the most out of this if you keep going forward, consuming information that you really can't take any action on. So whenever you're ready to order a product, that's the time to start your business entity. Again, as we move forward in the process, you're going to be creating your Amazon account. If you don't have products, then there's no point. You have no business going and doing that. You're just wasting your time and effort and actually money as well at that particular point. So do go back and do more research. Whenever you do have the products and you're ready to place the order, now we're actually take, talking because whenever you're ready to place the order, you must have the business entity in place. That's what I'm saying here. So let's move on to talk about why a business entity. Why are they even important? Well, I covered this in the module, but let's talk about this a little bit deeper. So business vehicles are for you to be able to do a business. That's really what we want to do if we decide, look, I'm going to stick my toe in the water here without a company. Later on down the line, it can get difficult to actually change that. And what that does for your mindset is it actually sets you back because you're not starting off and saying, I'm going to be successful with this. The business entity allows you to have that vehicle and to actually, it actually puts you in the success mindset right from the very start. Now, the coffee shop reality is if you're in a situation where you want to buy a local business, and let's say it costs about $60,000 to buy, you now have a local business that is producing a fairly modest income for you. Maybe your coffee shop makes you about sixty dollars to $70,000 a year, which is okay. It's not going to make you rich, but it's certainly an okay way to live. If instead of buying that business for $60,000, you decided to invest $60,000 into physical products, then your whole business, your whole life would change because we know we can double our investment. 
we can turn 60 into 120 in a relatively short period of time. Then we can continue doubling that over and over again. Even if we don't exactly double, let's say a product doesn't do exactly the way we want it to do, we decide we're just going to sell it out, etc. We're still covering ourselves at all times. When you start off with a business entity, you are signaling to yourself, I'm going to succeed. Some people have an, an objection to running a business because they think that it's expensive. So I want to dispel that myth. It's not expensive. The business expenses that you're going to have running a business don't multiply as your business scales. As your business scales and we get to double the investments, your business expenses do not double. Whenever you get to six, seven or eight figures, expenses will go up because there will be more accounting to do on the back end of the business. But generally, it's not an expensive way to do things. With the coffee shop local store example, if that business is to increase outside of the capacity that's available, well, you've got to get another store or you've got to increase the size of the current store and you've got to go and get more employees in place. Whereas when we're leveraging Amazon, we're using Amazon's capabilities. They're doing the extra work and creating the extra capacity for us. We don't have to purchase a new store and employ a whole team of new people. We have variable costs. Every cost we have is related to our sales, which allows us to scale very, very big. And we don't have to keep on increasing the amount of money we pay out to employees or to rent new premises. We don't have to take on more fixed costs as a part of our business model. We have some fixed costs, but we don't have all those massive fixed costs of rent and employees and workers' compensation insurance that a traditional business may have. When we create a business entity, we remove the personal risk. We want to start to limit liability business uh, where our personal assets are protected. When you're in business as a sole proprietor, you are the business and the business is you. If you go into business thinking, I'll change to a limited liability company whenever I get to X amount of turnover, there's a chance that might never happen. You might never get there because you keep changing the rules on yourself. It's almost more difficult to do. It's difficult to do from a mindset point of view. Let's start this off the way that we should and the best way so that you can then grow. This is the intelligent sales machine system that you are learning. This is a process that works and has worked for many other people and will continue to work for many, many people, including you. There's no point going from being a sole proprietor to limited liability company when you have a system that works. Whenever you know what you're doing, whenever you can draw on my knowledge and my team's knowledge to get you the results that you're looking for, that's why I'm saying to set up a limited liability company structure from day one. It will also depend on where you live. Everybody in this program is from different countries all over the world, but every country has a limited liability company structure. Sometimes you may not have a company created in your own country. You may need to go outside your own country, which I'll talk about as well. That's fine. We're in a situation where we can work from home and have a home business, and it's a global business. That's the power of Amazon. That's what you have now. A lot of people are going to say this is complicated. Some people will say it's difficult. It's very important to, to take stock right now and say it's not complicated. It's not difficult. It's not going to take a long time because limited liability company structures are set up every single day of the week. Whenever you deal with a professional and you outsource that, you take the work away. You don't need to know how to set up a limited liability company. You just need to find an accountant or a CPA that will help you set it up. They will make you compliant at the end of the financial year. Every business requires this. Every business has an accountant, whether it's small, medium, large, they all have them. You will be no different. You will outsource that work. We don't want to spend our time keeping up with accountancy standards. Sure, you can read about them. It makes sense to be somewhat educated, of course, but actually, Doing the work behind this doesn't make sense if you're going to grow a business because we only have a limited amount of time available to us all. We've got to use that time the most effective way possible. Even if you are an accountant going through this program, I would still not be the accountant of that business. I would give that to somebody else to do. Why? Because you're no longer an accountant, you're an investor, you're an entrepreneur. I keep telling you that I want you to be more than just another Amazon seller. The way to do that is by understanding you can't do it all on your own. The most important activity or activities that you should be doing are the research and actually 
adding in those second and third products. Whenever you get your first product through, you've got your business entity. You then need to go straight back and get the second product. You shouldn't delay. That's where the vast majority of people delay. They delay in the process of setting up a business, of importing, of doing all these different things. That's where people can delay and make a business mistake. An accountant as well is going to give you financial advice. I'm not giving financial advice to anyone. Only a professional in that field can give you financial advice. So meet the accountant or CPA and tell them everything about your business so they are then well armed to provide advice and help you make decisions. If you provide all the information that your professional needs, they can give you the best financial advice possible for your personal situation no matter where you live in the US, Europe or Australia or anywhere in the world. Accountants can help you stay out of trouble with the tax office and make sure you do everything legally required in your particular jurisdiction. But accountants shouldn't always be telling you what to do because they will look at your books at times and they might say things like, you pay a lot of fees to Amazon. Wouldn't you be better off doing it all yourself? They might advise you to do your own fulfillment. <clears throat> accountants don't always understand the benefits that we receive from Amazon. They don't always understand why we are doing what we're doing. They cannot always understand the freedom that Amazon actually gives us. They can only see the numbers. So just bear in mind when you go to an accountant and explain why you are using Amazon to create this lifestyle business. You've got to make the business decisions. Most accountants have never been in this business before. You have. You're actually a lot more experienced with Amazon after taking the advice that I have provided you inside this particular course in terms of your Amazon business. When you get more advanced with your business, you will be getting into tax planning, as in reducing the amount of tax that you will have to pay legally. It's just something you want to bear in mind for the future. Your accountant can set up your company structure. When you speak to an accountant for the first time, they're often going to give you your initial advice for no charge. Why is that? Well, they want to get you on as a client, so they're often not going to make you pay to sit down and speak to them initially. They want your business so doing a free consultation with you to talk about your business, especially if you're in a position where you're going to be setting one up, is when you're starting to build a relationship with them as well. You were never stuck with an accountant. Whenever you've done one year's accounts or whatever, you can move to another accountant if you're not happy. You're, you're just never, ever stuck with the same accountant. I've moved plenty of times. I've finally found a good one that understands Amazon. So you want to look and see, can I work with somebody who is a little more modern? Sometimes a real old school accountant is going to be trickier to work with doing this kind of business. You want someone a little more modern. There are accountants in my country, Australia, who are very good at working with Amazon sellers and are very modern and actually sell on Amazon themselves. I want to discuss the issue now of conditioning in society because most people don't run businesses. Most people you talk to are spending money all the time. They've never invested anything. Most people think running a business is risky, and these are the people who have never run a business before. It's the complete opposite of what these people think. Business is protection. It's your vehicle to wealth and freedom. You can grow your Amazon business, you can grow and you can multiply your products into different countries of the world, or a business gives you the vehicle to do this. A beneficial owner is the owner of the company. You own the business, so you are the beneficial owner. Whoever gets money from the company and from its profits are beneficial owners. Whenever you see anything to do with beneficial owners, that is you, your partners, or whoever owns that particular business. You might be asking the question about what country you should start selling in. A lot of people will start in their home country or territory that's closest to them. The biggest possible marketplace is the US. As a country, it's the biggest sole country. But Europe, as a territory, is just the same size as the US. When people ask me, where should I start? I only have one answer for that, and that's globally. That's where I say to start because it makes the most sense. Now, I'm not saying that you must start globally, but you should eventually get there. Now, you may choose to start in one country. That's absolutely fine. It's best to have that expert advice from your accountant to set up your particular structure in the country you choose to sell in. Now, let's say you don't live in North America and you don't live in Europe, but you live in a country that is an accepted country of residence from Amazon. You can choose either place to start selling. Some people will ask, I live in 
X country. It's not currently available on Amazon, as in it's not a, an accepted country of residence. How do I get around this? I always say you don't. You've got to wait for Amazon to put that country in place so that you can actually sell there because what's going to happen is you're going to set up a company, wherever it is, you're going to go, then go to Amazon, set up an account as we go through that in the modules coming. And you're going to be in a situation where Amazon at some point will ask you to give your own identity, where you live, etc. Remember, you're the beneficial owner. They're going to ask you for this information. People say, why are they asking me? It's because you're a beneficial owner. Amazon, they want to know who's associated with the business. They want to see who you are and want to make certain that everything is above board and is fine because they don't want scammers selling on Amazon. You've got to bear in mind that you want to be straight up with Amazon. You don't want to try and game the system. We never game the system, as you know. Doing this is only going to slow down your progress. That's just the reality. There might be ways of working with other sellers, selling your product to them or whatever the case may be if your country is not available to sell on Amazon. But the best answer is you're likely going to wait. If that's the case, then your decision is actually made for you by the Amazon system. Even though we know there are some cons to selling in just one country, there are some cons even to selling globally because you've got to be set up in a different way. You're going to have to have two different business entities if you want to sell globally. It's just the way of it. You're going to have to invest in more stock. So should we start with North America? One of the cons is you've got just one country. Canada and Mexico are really quite small and not worth researching or shipping products to. If we look at Europe, you've got five countries. Whenever you have a product that's being sold in North America, you're only appealing to one batch of consumers, whereas in Europe, you potentially have five different types. You might say that you have five plays or five opportunities. That's definitely a pro for Europe versus a con for the US. You also have, because of the sheer size of the US, to move stock around from fulfillment center to fulfillment center, whereas that's not the case in Europe. Amazon are gonna say, you need to send stock to multiple FBA destinations for the same product. Whereas in Europe, it's just not the case. You're sending one batch of products to one place, which is so much simpler. Obviously, as you become more advanced in Europe, that will change. You'll send stock to more than one country. But we don't start that way, which is the good news. That's why the EFN, the European Fulfillment Network, is so powerful. In the US, we don't have an EFN. We've got to send stock to Canada, to Mexico and the US. I live in Australia and I started selling in the US as my first Amazon FBA destination. Let's talk about some pros in the US. It's certainly by far the biggest country, no doubt about it. You're looking at over 300 million people. It is a massive economy. It's great because of that. It's a great consumer society. Whenever you look at the next biggest country in the marketplace, you're looking at Germany in terms of population. It's just over 80 million people. The population of the US is a huge pro. The US is well established. There's a well established base of customers there. People in the US always go to Amazon to find products. In Europe, in certain countries, people don't go straight to Amazon because it's not that established yet. Even so, Amazon itself is still growing in the US. Total retail sales in the US currently are still below 15%. A lot of people in the US are still buying offline. There's still a lot of people that have yet to make that move online. Still people doing things in an older way. That's true in Europe as well, no doubt about it. But I think with the US, there's still a massive opportunity there. It's nowhere near saturated. You can take advantage of the biggest marketplace, which is the US. But at the same time, take advantage of another big marketplace, which is the EU. Do some translations of the product listings, do your currency conversions, you can sell to Europeans and to Americans at exactly the same time, exactly the same day. All you've got to do is whenever you're ordering your stock, you don't actually have to order double because you can split it. And I'm going to be teaching you that in the next module. You can take advantage of all these different Amazon marketplaces at exactly the same time. That's really what global multiplication is all about. That's why the rule of five works. When we sell in more than one country, we get this opportunity to scale ourselves a lot faster. You could grow to be in a situation where you have a global business selling products to millions of potential customers. You just need to make your choice for Europe, make your choice for the US, or make a choice to go global. If you start in the US, you can always move to Europe when you get going. 
If you start in Europe, you can always move to the US when you get going. You don't need to start globally. It's just my advice to do so. I'm not talking about selling in Japan or India. These countries are extremely difficult. Simple as that. Because not only do we have currency, but we're looking at a language barrier, a real language barrier. I'm not talking about letters and words that look different. I'm talking about actual symbols. Um, there are different business structures required to get your products into those countries that will come eventually. But for now, I wouldn't advise you to get involved in Japan or India. I want you to get involved in the North American markets and I want you to get involved in the European markets. Actually, the marketplaces are boring and established as well. They've been around for so long. Now, if you live in the US, the likelihood is you're going to set up a US structure to sell in the US. If you're not from the US, I mean, there are different structures that you can use in the US. Um, as I said earlier, I recommend speaking to an accountant and saying, I intend to sell in a North American market. Can I use a local entity to do so? A local limited liability entity in this country. Can I sell there and what are the implications? Your business entity will also require a bank account. You need to be paid out by Amazon. And the bank account has got to be in the business name. It's got to be in the business address. You shouldn't use a personal bank account for your business because you want to keep it separate. That would be crazy. From your accountant's perspective, they're going to want to see a business bank account. They're going to want to be able to account for your transactions easily. Whenever you set up on Amazon, you're going to need to have your bank account details. The bank account must be in the name and address of your business. If you're living in Europe, you speak to an accountant, you can say, I'm going to sell on Amazon. What are the implications for having a company here? And they'll tell you the implications. You can look at that. You can make decisions. You can then look at what if I set up a company in, say, an Amazon marketplace country, would that, would that change the implications from a tax point of view? An accountant is going to explain that to you. This is just a part of doing business. And now you're an investor. You're, you're now a business owner. You've got to be solid on this kind of stuff because nobody else really talks about this. This is an intermission between you're doing your research and getting to a point when you're going to order. We're going to order very, very soon. But before we do that, we just want to get some structural stuff correct. And this won't take long to set up. It's not going to take you months. It's going to take you days to a week or two. It's the kind of time frame we're talking about here, depending on where you live, etc. So don't feel like this is a big thing now. This is just something you're doing. Sometimes people want me to do a step-by-step -step of setting up on an Amazon account, but it's really, really simple. Once you have the business entity in place, that's going to help you because Amazon will guide you through. They ask you for information. You simply provide Amazon with the information they ask you. There's no getting around things. You give them what they're looking for because that's what they're asking for. They are the boss at the end of the day in terms of getting onto the platform. It's their platform. We're jumping on there. We're using the platform to build our business. I think as well, we're doing everything right here. We're, we're doing everything by the letter of the law. So whenever you go to Amazon to set up the account, do not be afraid of any of the information. They're simply asking you the info so that they can set up your account correctly. Amazon has had too many scammers on their platform, so that's why it's a little bit more strict to set up. You've got to answer a few more questions. Just answer them. You're doing absolutely nothing wrong. If you've questions on this process, just go to Amazon because it's their platform. That's the best place to ask set up questions. Sometimes we ask questions and we go to the wrong person. You must be asking Amazon about setup because it's their platform. The first thing um, I want to finish up on is discussing companies like World First. So World First can send money from wherever you are based over to your supplier in China. It's important because your bank will not always be able to do that effectively or efficiently in terms of cost or even just their systems. Their systems may not be as updated as the likes of some of these third-party payments. There's a lot of them out there. And it's definitely something you should go and research and find out. These companies can actually help you become a lot more efficient with those international payments. They're very efficient and they're cost-effective. You're best starting an account with World First when you've got your company set up and you're kind of ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed this analysis video. You will want to watch these videos more than once. So I will see you in the module, in the next module, for the introduction video.